Now we have studied what are the roles, objectives, when and why it was nationalized and what are the shortcomings. Let us take up the quiz. The number of banks nationalized in 1969. In 1969, 14 banks were nationalized. In 1980, 6 more banks were nationalized. So in 1969, they are asking 14 banks were nationalized. Out of 5.6 lakh villages, how many were served by the commercial banks before nationalization? Before nationalization, 5,000 banks, 5,000 villages had banking facilities. In terms of deposit mobilization, Maharashtra is the state which leads. 22% of the deposit, total deposit comes from Maharashtra. The number of banks in uh, India at the time of independence were, there were nearly 645 banks in India at the time of independence. In terms of lending, Priority sector constitute about dash percent of the total bank lending. Lending 38%. Round off, you can say nearly 40% of the lending goes to the priority. How many banks were nationalized in 1980? In 1980, 6 banks were nationalized. 14 banks were nationalized in the year 1969. The government established in Dash in 1982 to finance rural projects at low rate of interest. The government has established a bank for agriculture and rural development. It is called as NABAD. So NABAD was established in 1982 to finance rural projects at lower rate. The nationalization of six commercial bank happened in the year 1980. Now you should remember 14 plus 6 but since there has been a merger of two banks so now 19 banks are nationalized. Banks not only accept deposits but also dash saving. They accept deposits and mobilize savings. Mobilize saving means they channel it to a proper direction. Which of the following functions modern banks do not perform? The issue of letter of credit, publishing of statistics, handling of foreign exchange reserves, conducting inquiry survey. All these services, if it is issue of letter of credit, they also publish statistics, they conduct inquiry survey. But handling of foreign exchange reserves is not done by commercial banks. It is done by RBI, which we will study later. Banking Ombudsman means, now Ombudsman was a body that was made by the government to address the grievances of customers. The customers, the grievances, all the complaints that, had, that they had regarding the banks about payment or uh, not receiving their payments on time, all these grievances, they were addressed. So Banking Ombudsman means, Person appointed to recover dues? No. A person to whom customers can approach for redress of their grievances. So the, it was a cell made for addressing to the customer's grievances. So banking ombudsman means a person to whom customers can approach for redress of their grievances. Bad and doubtful debts of scheduled commercial banks are known as, we had studied, they are known as NPAs or non-performing assets. The bad debts that are not realized or doubtful debts, they are called as non-performing assets. Which of the following is not a function of commercial bank? Lending of loans, it is a function of commercial bank. Agency services is a function. Receipts of deposits is a function. Issue of currency is a function of RBI. RBI issues currency and not commercial banks. So this is not a function of commercial banks. Lending and borrowing operations of commercial banks results in the country, it results in credit creation. We had seen that how when a bank lends money, then how it multiplies. So it leads to credit creation. Nationalization of banks aimed at all of the following except removal of control by few. Yes, it aimed at this 
provision of credit to big industries only no it did not aim at giving credit to only big industries it aimed at giving credit to the priority sector as well let's see the other ones provision of adequate credit for agriculture yes encouragement of a new class of entrepreneur yes nationalization of bank aimed at all these things except the v1 